Praise the Lord. It says in Colossians chapter 1, and he is before all things, and in him all things exist, consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell. What a gift to behold him and to worship and to receive. We bless you, Lord. Praise God. So, yeah. Welcome everybody online. Hey, take a moment, great, greet somebody. Share the love of Jesus. And I want to say hi to everybody online because this is part of being in God's glory and his presence. We start to then give away what we are carrying. And it's the love of God that starts spread, spreading. So I bless you. Everyone online, everyone who will catch up with us, return to this, watch us another time. It doesn't matter. There's a love anointing. A love explosion in Jesus Christ being found in him, accepted in the beloved, the loved one. We are finding that love, and I bless you, and give it away. Send a word of, of encouragement to somebody. Just a text to say, I prayed for you today, and I see God moving in your life. God is anointing words of encouragement and words of hope. Bless you, bless you, bless you. I love you online. You're part of our whole world outreach because you're all over the world. <laughs> okay, blessing. Okay, oh, thank you, I got my seat. Come on in now. That's good. We're gonna start our evening, but I got a really, exci really exciting uh, announcement to make for you. You're the first to hear it, and it's going to be for next Wednesday. Tonight we finished Revelation 22, so if you're keeping up with us, which it's always online, and you can download it, keep it on your phone, and then you just read the scripture that we're reading together. It's creating unity. It's creating the uh, faith. It's creating a one voice, one sound. So today we read 22, Revelation 22. So tomorrow we begin in Hebrews, and that's a 13-chapter book. Then we end with the last book we will read is Jude, which is one chapter. And so that'll take us into into uh, next three couple yeah pretty much next two weeks i was praying and i was asking the lord you know hebrews is a, i believe is the maturity of the church book as revelation is the closing of the age maturity of the church to be, to be ready to receive to be re to receive and to be received is in hebrews and yet it is a book that often people just kind of gloss over chapters because it's beyond immediate until you start to understand it and start to pray it. So we're going to be reading it. And I was asking the Lord, Lord, what can I do so that, that this book, which has been maybe a mystery for some, many of us, would be unlocked so that it could bring about the fruit that you've ordained for it. And he brought me, he's, he's, I started thinking, what if we could get Larry Napier here, who spent his life living in the book of Hebrews and has just, I just finished reading his manuscript for him that he's produced, publishing a book about Hebrews and about the great salvation and the high priest that holds us in that place of salvation. And it's, it's just outstanding. So we checked into it, and we've worked out the details. We've done this before, so we're going to bring him live into the house. And so we will, uh, he, he'll come on via Zoom. Uh, we will present his material. He'll be teaching, and we will uh, be together to, uh, I believe he'll unlock the book of Hebrews for you. I just believe you'll, you'll, you'll when you get, when this <clears throat> book gets published, it, it will be a, uh, a very important book for the living body of Jesus to step into. See, the thing is that what God has accomplished in his son goes beyond the cross because that's where the, the that's where the sin sacrifice was made once and for all. But because he was justified for our through that and called out of the abyss and called to be a son. He was now raised from the dead. We were raised with him, seated at the right hand. We are seated with him. And he was then given the high priestly ministry of Melchizedek, which means my righteous king. So when God made an oath, he said, I will call you to be my royal priest on, the, on my declaring you my righteous king, my king of righteousness. Now, all that says, like, whoa, whoa, whoa I'm, I'm not getting it. But here's the key. We've got to get it. 
not get it to get it with our brain, but to get it with our receiver and our relational knowing him. Because that's where all of the salvation breaks through. All of the help comes. So, you know, Peter denied the Lord. And we think about denying the Lord as saying something like, I never knew you. I don't have any knowledge of you. But that was his beginning journey of life. I have to keep saying to the Lord, I cannot deny who you are to me. Because I have to stay in agreement with who you have revealed yourself to me to be. Now, the, the church grows in that. We get a hold of that. And you start, you start eliminating all of the thingamajigs that keep causing us to stumble. Because so much of what we're stumbling over has already been fully dealt with. And that's why uh, tomorrow, uh, Sunday, it says in Hebrews, and we'll be up to chapter 4, but I'll push this into chapter 5. It says, you ought to be teaching these, but you have to be taught the milk again. And because you're unskilled in the word of righteousness. So the imputing of righteousness through the, the glorification of the Lord and now our high priest is a place of beginnings and maintaining and growing. And then it just gets beyond that. So I'm really excited. Larry said, yes, he'll make room. We will we'll be same service, 6 o'clock, 6.30. We'll get by, have them on. It'll be online. It'll be in the house. And it's going to, I believe, really give a boost and, and, a, and a bolster anyone's faith and encouragement and, and to get further into that revelation of what was brought out in the book of Hebrews. So, praise Jesus. And then there's something coming the following week, but I'll tell you about that next and one thing at a time. Praise Jesus. And we're going to talk about this prayer meeting exploded for me. Exploded for me. And, and I kept feeling the explosion throughout the day. And I believe that I'll share at the end, we're going to look at the book of Revelation, chapter 21, 22. I'll share with you online. We'll break up into small groups, give away what we've been hearing, receive what others are speaking. But first, we want to make room for testimonies because those who have come into the sanctuary and given a couple hours of their day or an hour or however much they could afford and those of you online that you couldn't be here or you were here but you can't get back here, you can put in what God said to you. If you were on at home, made an altar and said, I'm going to be at one hour with the glory of, in the presence of God, asking for the outpouring of God to do what he accomplished in his son, to be seen in his church. Uh, anything we want to hear about that because it's all transferable. If the Lord does something for one, he does it for all. He shows no partiality. If he gives it to one, he's, it's extended. So we bring the person up, whoever, who's, who is here the earliest? Six o'clock, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, ten o'clock. What? Yeah, 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 but they're not here. I, I know who I'm, I'm looking for. I'm just kind of retreating. Okay, praise God then. It will, well, I'll do mine at the end. Brian, why have you start? Brian will come up, share what God showed him and what was happening, and then release it. We'll stand up when he releases it, just as a posture of, of, anticip of, ex of expectancy. So go ahead, Brian. Thanks. Good. We're on. Can you hear me? Good. Today when I was hearing, thank you, Becky, I'm good. you can hear. Um, out of Amos 9 and verse 13, it says, Behold... The day come, says the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, him who, whom that sows seed, and the mountains shall uh, drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. And I will bring again the captivity of the people of Israel, and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit and they shall plant the vineyards and drink the wine thereof and they shall also make gardens and eat the fruit and I will plant them upon their land and they shall no more be pulled up from their land which I have given them says the Lord thy God so again what I was hearing was that what God was doing was bringing, it says in that day, but 
in Jesus, that day is today. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter when that day is, that day is today. And so he's, and and it says of Israel, but but we're grafted in. Yes, we are. So where the it's the same. And so what I was hearing was just that what, and it was in the watch, but then it was throughout the day. I just heard him kept saying, "I'm bringing increase." I'm going to take the things that have been lost, the things that are stolen, the things that are that are that have been wasteland, those places that doesn't seem like they're 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 moving forward, and I'm going to turn them into fruitful, fruitful places beyond what we could even imagine. So I just I just kept all day just running that. What would that look like? What would that look like if God came into this? What would God look like mm. if God came into that? What would God look like if he came into this person's life and that? And it just, I just, it just kept building mm. inside of me that faith that just says that, that I got it and the increase is there. The increase, don't look at the circumstances. Mm-hmm. Don't look mm. at the wasteland. <laughs> don't look at the, 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 the loss or, the, or the, the chaos or whatever. But just keep focusing on me because I've got increase that's yes, that yes, is yes. coming, but it yes. also is. And so, what I'd like to do, if if, if it is, is just release that increase. Whoa! Yes, like yes, 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 yes. I so, Father, I thank you. You, your word is true. It is completely true, Lord. In our circumstances, they are they are always subject to your change. So, Father, right now, I want to again speak out over over this body and over all those who are, watch, who are watching and all those that will watch later on demand. I want to speak over them the increase of God. That's increase into all circumstances by the Father. I thank you, Lord, that you're taking wasteland and ruins. You're taking chaos and you're turning it into a glorious garden that is fruitful and is causing us to be overwhelmed with sweet wine in the fruit of the garden father so we right now receive from you we receive from you that increase that increase for each of us for our family for those that we carry those that we love and that are that are in struggle and trouble we receive right now increase increase of the spirit increase in our finances increase in love increase in Mm -hmm. relationships going back on track increase of jobs and opportunities Mm -hmm. and movement in the spirit we just receive right now from you father all that you're doing and all that you're gonna do and all that you're you're supplying father we receive it right now in the name of jesus amen i receive it i receive it yes lord yes lord yes lord Yes, Lord. Uh, yeah, come on up. Oh, yeah, come on. It's all right. We're, we, we can be out of order, too. I just like. Out of order? You're out of sequence of who is here. Order. Not yet, right now. Who's on first? Who's on second? Who's on third? All right. So I um, was here for the two to six time, but two to four. Um, and we started with uh, the, the baskets of the prodigals were on the floor. And it was really funny because I walked in and sometimes when you come into prayer, it, it takes a minute to listen and hear where the Lord is rather than just step in where you are already and, and to hear what was going on. and and. You know, I came into a session where there were three, like, on fire, intercessor, past uh, prophet, going, going, going. And I'm like, ha, ah. <laughs> And I sat and, and I waited and, and I just began to pray that, that God would build altars of worship in each one of our hearts. Wow, yeah. And, <clears throat> and as... Um, as I began to carry on with that, I was in here with Lori, and, and I saw the prodigals, and I just began to declare God's promise over every one of yes, them and yes, recognize yes, that, yes. you know, the, I just asked him to forgive me for judging 
where they are with the Lord based on what I see and what my expectations are. Because I have expectations for the prodigals in my life. I have a place where I want them to be, where I think that then it would be enough. And, and God's like, but I know their story. So today as we worshiped and we kept singing, catch me up in your story, yeah, the yeah. Lord was saying, they're in my story. Yes, yes. They're in my story. And so I just repented. I'm like, I repent of wanting to see it the way I think it would yeah, make my yeah. soul happy. Because <laughs> that's, you know, true. Yeah. I want to see it the way I think it should be so that I can go, yes, they're yours. And he's like, they're mine. Trust their story to me, just like your story was mine. Their story is mine. So we repented, and, and we just began declaring, and that led me into uh, when I came in and I sat down, and I was feeling, because I was with all these really powerfully engaged, declarative intercessors, that I just really felt out of place. And I was trying to put on spirituality in that moment rather than just being where I was yeah, yeah, and yeah. letting him encounter <clears throat> me. So I got to repent for that too. So it was a good, it was a good afternoon. He's like, I don't, I don't need you to be anything other than what you are, where you are, and let me encounter you right there and just have that expectation. So I want to read to you out of Romans 8. Starting at verse 27. I'd actually like to read all of Romans, but I love you and I'm not going to do that. Okay. <laughs> um, I mean, chapter 8. But starting at verse 27, it says, Now he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And in that moment, I was the one trying to make intercession for the saints. And the Lord said, I'm the one making intercession. And that the mind of the Spirit, that, that, that God, the Father who's searching my heart, he knows what the mind of the Spirit is. If I'll sit and allow myself to just be present, I have the mind of Christ. And the Spirit already knows He's already, and the Father knows what the Spirit is already doing, what Jesus is doing in intercession. So I don't have to come afraid. I don't have to come anxious. I get to just come and then say, what is your heart? What is your heart? What is your heart in this moment? And so then in that place, when I finally just let him access my heart and I stopped trying to be the leader, of that time, then it arose. Then the intercession came. Then the joy. Then I just probably walked two miles in this room making declaration of God's power, God's strength, God's might, God's glory, and, and coming to the place. And the thing that came up was no more fake, just faith. Mm. No more fake, no more trying to be righteous, no more trying to be holy, no more trying to be the leader of the prayer moment. No more fake, just faith. Yeah. And I said, faith comes from you. Yeah. Faith comes from hearing your word. And that's when the word just started coming forth and the word just started coming forth and the word, because if you've sown it in you, then he's going to pull it out of you. And now, now I'm in agreement and everywhere where I was didn't matter because it was swallowed up in who he is. So if you'll stand with me, I just want to pray. No more fake, only faith, faith that comes from God for every single one of us, anywhere where we are posturing, Lord, trying to be righteous, trying to be holy, even just trying to hold on. Let us just come to you and say, here I am and this is all I have. But you are everything. And you have given me everything through Jesus. So Father, you bring forth your son through me. 
that we may walk in faith that comes by hearing your word, the word of the Lord. Open our ears, open our hearts, and anywhere we're covering ourselves with a fig leaf, trying in our own strength, in your grace and your tenderness and your mercy, just whisper to us, I'm here. And let us always ask first, but what do you say? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, I know Lord. where I am. I know what I'm oh, thinking. I, I know what I want to pray. But what do you say, Father? Yes, Lord. And let yes, us come Lord. into full agreement with yes, you yes. by your grace and your mercy and your spirit in Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Bless you. Bless you. Good day. We, were, we did the five to six prayer watch. That's the last one, and we do it in the soaking room. And uh, I was the only woman in there. But we had a lot of fiery men full of the spirit. It rose something inside of me that had, it, it was always there, but I hadn't released it because I was afraid of blowing somebody out of the water, and I wanted them to feel comfortable in prayer. But I didn't need to think about anything because these guys blew me out of the water. It was so full of fire, so full of the Holy Spirit. One of the younger men had their little, I don't know how old she is, two or three, oh, three. She's three years old in there. And her dad had put, we have a TV in there, and he put worship on. And she came over with the clicker, turned the TV off, went over to the keyboard, three years old, turned it on, and started playing notes. Instantly, the Lord says, she's a worship leader, and she's releasing the prophetic in this room. Mm. Let her go. So I said it because her dad was going to go and correct her, and, you know, I said, go for it. She's, she's, she's worshiping. She turned off what was the TV somebody else worshiping, and she's releasing the prophetic in this room. Yeah, that's good. That's Three good. years old. That's good. That's good. I, I wasn't going to share this, but I have to. I had an open vision in my house the other day. Lasted for six or seven hours in the middle of the night. And it was in this sanctuary. And the worship people were up here, but they were full of fire. They didn't stand still. They were moving. They all became like, like Norco. <laughs> but they were all walking, walking, and running. And we had two young men on both sides. And they started yelling. You know the way Wes yells? It was like that. <laughs> but it went. And then one of them, I didn't even know he could sing, got the mic and started singing. And he was declaring, and it was so full of fire. And then Ali and the flaggers came from all the different aisles with their flags, and they were just going strong. And everybody, nobody was sitting down. Nobody had to say, let's worship. Come on, everybody, get engaged. Everybody was engaged. The fire of God was all over the house. There was angels going, but they weren't pretty angels. They weren't angels like dressed all in white with pretty wings. They were fire angels. They were full of fire, and they were releasing something into the atmosphere that was fire. And the Lord said, it's the glory of God. It's the glory of God. And, and I thought, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. So the first thing I did the next day was run to Diana. I got to tell Diana what we have to do. I didn't tell her we have to do this, but I, I said, I got to share my vision with you. And, and I told her, and then I told Pastor Steve and Pastor Brian, and I said, oh, my gosh, this happened and all that. In the prayer room today, the Lord said to me, nothing has to happen in the natural. The natural does not dictate what happens in the spiritual. Yes. It already happened. And he said, the Lord of the breakthrough came in, and the fire of God came upon my people because they have been crying out for breakthrough. They need breakthrough. They need breakthrough. And the Lord of the breakthrough has come in. So go ahead and stand up. 
Father, I we agree right now that the Lord of the breakthrough yes, has yes, broken through yes, in Jubilee yes. Church and everyone we know in our families and everything else and the fire of God has already been released and the glory of God has come upon us and I thank you Father God that we will we dare to believe God that Jesus Christ is Lord 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 amen 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 wow yes amen 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 Peter come on up yeah so I uh, my wife said to me today I'll take the early shift she's taking a retreat that she has every year with her prayer partner Jean Myers and they were in Ohio, and they decided both to come to the early shift today, from 6 to 8. And I said, I'll, I'll take the later shift, and I came at the uh, 4 o'clock final shift, 4 to 6. And um, what I felt was uh, Allie and, and Diane, during the last half of that shift, were, were just starting to, to prep for worship. And I felt just a strong presence of the Lord in this place today, very powerful. I felt like I was on my knees and I was just felt like the glory was here. And I, I don't know what you were saying, what you saw, Pastor yeah. Steve, you said how the, the intercession and the prayer today really was ministering to you. Yeah. But that's what I felt, I felt the glory of the Lord. And um, they were singing about, Lord, your word, it will come to pass and about your presence will be here. And I thought about the scripture in Psalms where David says, you told me, Lord, to seek thy face. And thy face, O Lord, I will seek. And, um, you know, uh, no man, it says in 1 John, has seen God at any time. But there's been many cases where Christ, Jesus, has appeared to many people. Mm -hmm. And I was listening to a message from Tim Sheets, who's the brother of Dutch Sheets, about the increased phenomenal, like he's never seen, angelic activity now that's on the earth. In our last Saturday meeting, where we were able to send Larry uh, Bigman off with his wife, and we, the, one of the ladies said she saw the, in the park there, the angels were all over the hills. But the Lord spoke to me that even though there's gonna be great increase in angelic activity, the, the, the seraphim with the purple sashes that sim symbolize authority over uh, governmental entities and the, the seraphim that have the blue sashes would have to do with awakening and revivals. They are on the increase. But the Lord spoke to me and I, I did not know you were gonna have Larry Naper teach from Hebrews and I did not know that you were prepping us tonight to read on with Hebrews and start reading the book of Hebrews, but this is the scripture that the Lord spoke to me um, about the importance of even with the angelic activity that will be on the increase that's coming with this coming awakening, we have to keep our eyes on Jesus yes. Yes. and not on angels. Yes. 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 He says, for which of the angels did he ever say, you are my son, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 5. And again, I will be to him a father, and he will be to me a son. And when he again brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels, he said, he who makes his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. But to the son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. You, will, you, Lord, in the beginning laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain, and they will all grow old like a garment, like a cloak. You will fold them up, and they will be changed, but you are the same for your years will not fail. And to which of the angels has he ever said, sit at my right hand 
till I make your enemies your footstool. But they, the angels, are all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for us who will inherit salvation. And the song came to me where I felt we could, we all entered in, and I'd like to have us share it again. Maybe you guys have it in your repertoire again. But it was that song, I see the Lord, not angels. I see the Lord sitting mm -hmm. upon the throne, exalted, and the train of his robe fills the temple with glory. And the whole earth is filled. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Can we stand and sing that with me? I see the Lord seated on the throne, exalted, and the train of his robe fills the temple with glory. Yes, the whole earth is filled, and the whole earth is filled with his glory. Holy, holy, holy. Yes, Lord. Amen. That's a really good word. Really good word. Wes, you have something? Yeah, come on up. Just short. We've got two minutes for each of you. Then you come on up, please. Then we've got a few yeah, minutes. I, I really feel like the Lord, you know, is telling me, like, new, new glasses, spiritually or physically, whatever that means to you. So I'm just going to pop this out. Just to have, like, a lens change, to, like, be able to see differently and interpret differently and think differently because it's so easy you know if you if you um i have a friend who had a damaged he had a damaged eye and he didn't know forever he was just seeing life wrong because the eye was messed up and then things get corrected and then you start to see correctly yeah. and yeah. you know it takes a while to transition into that and i, I just i just want to pray that let's do it that's good and if you want to put hands on your eyes or your head or just somewhere on your body, just to release life into yourself. Lord, I just thank you for new vision mm -hmm. for people spiritually, mm -hmm. that they can see themselves through the love of Father God, only through the love of Father God, mm -hmm. that we're able to, to have heavenly love come into us when we're alone, when we're going through the craziest things the things when we're at home that nobody sees that people don't want to talk about because every one of us is broken in an area and that's why you sent Jesus so that you can heal us so that you can show us how to live and how to think and how to receive your love correctly and there's no method we just show up and you change the way we believe and the way we think so Lord I thank you that you're just correcting all vision issues physically, spiritually, and emotionally in every way. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Amen. Amen. Thank you, David. Come on, boys. Thanks, David. Uh, Becky, thanks for uh, stirring this up. So I'm going to do it real quick. Um, I had something else I was going to share, but we had an uh, intercessor here, one of those grandmas in the faith, like the war room mama, grandma. And uh, she was praying out for single moms and even single fathers. And she started to get into the children. And she spoke of children in such an endearing way. And, it sh and the Lord showed me that when President Trump began to speak about uh, holidays and saying, no, it's going to be Merry Christmas, that the moment that he began to speak about Merry Christmas, things started to shift. And I saw her intercession and how she was bringing up the children and it was shifting everything in the spirit and the Lord was turning hearts of fathers to children and children of fathers just because of the endearment within her heart towards the children and her desire to see the children met with the father's heart, even in broken families. So I want to pray for us if we would stand up and let's agree. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. All it takes is one to connect, yes, yes, one, yes, one, one to begin to be moved by your desire, yes, one Lord. to long for the things you long for, one to believe that hearts of fathers can turn to children, that broken-hearted mothers can turn to their children, and that these children that have been given up to rebellion would be given up for the wisdom of, of the, dis, the disobedient turning to the wisdom of the just, that these ones would see the preparation of their heart coming in such a way where their heart could never have been prepped, but it was the prayer that went before them that began to prepare them and their hearts that were in rebellion and turning away suddenly the disobedient turned to the wisdom of the just and we saw the reconciliation of families and we saw their hurt hearts be reconciled to the father and there became a wholeness and a completeness and families were thriving again and the beauty of holiness was on display as mamas and papas and fathers and mothers and children and grandchildren began to dwell together in unity. We just give you glory that you're doing a beautiful thing that kids and kiddos and any slang for children is going out the window. We're going to begin to speak about children in a manner worthy of what you desire for the children and suddenly the hearts of the fathers are going to turn because they're going to know the children's purpose and that's to experience God the Father through their heart and that these children would be reconciled back to the Father yes. one yes. after the other in Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Let's go ahead and be seated. I uh, at, at the close we're, we're going to break up into small groups but at the close when we I want to release a blessing that's really over all of us which is God is off. God is a bringing new hope, and He's asking us tonight: Are you willing to let go of your old hope? There's going to be a there's going to be a freedom. It's a it's a it's a liberation, and we're going to we'll release that at the blessing. And then we've got to talk about the rest and refresh coming up Friday night, and uh, the uh, what's going to something else. But I'll remember by the time I get there. So. We've got seven minutes. If you could take a moment, what we want to do is break up into small groups, two, three people, not more than that, because we want everyone to share and everyone to hear. And what is God doing, has done, where is your heart burning and the words you're reading? And then let's take that time to minister, and then I'm going to take the time with everyone online. So if we can go ahead and uh, break up. I'm going to be in Revelation 22 in the line, online. Okay, so guess what? Uh, Revelation 22, we finished the book, and, and yet it's just the beginning of, of eternity. We see a throne room. We see a river of life. It's like uh, seen in Ezekiel. It is uh, bringing healing. It's bringing uh, 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 life wherever it goes. And we see the servants of God, and the, they see his face, and they have his name. It's culmination. It's it's, it's finishing, it's completion, it's maturity, 
and and this is the new Jerusalem this is the new heaven and earth and yet there's still progress going on in the chapter and then Jesus says in verse 6 these are words um, you know verse 7 behold I am coming quickly blessed are you who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book so the, the this coming quickly Jesus says it three times it's red lettered and it's in chapter verse 6 it's in verse 12 um, and it's in verse 20, the second to the last verse in the chapter 22. So again, we keep speaking about quickly, is that it's a suddenly. It may feel like it's taking forever, but upon his quickliness, it's likened as a thief. So it's not something expected, but it's not going to over, he's not going to overtake us as a thief because we're the sons of light. We're the sons that are walking in the light, so we will see in the light and not be in the darkness. But the chapter for me opened up, uh, and I've been listening, I've been just doing Revelation over and over again. It's one of the joys if you can plug your phone into your car while you're driving and just put it on read. You can get through a, a book over a week, and I'd encourage you to do that for Hebrews, because there's so much of Hebrews that is more caught at first than it is taught. Uh, but he goes on, and he says, um, he's talking about this faithful, it's true, and John is so overwhelmed again with the revelation of what is being given. This is the second time, two chapters earlier, he did the same thing. He falls at the angel's feet to worship. And the angel says, see that you don't do this, verse 9. He said, I don't. I'm here to serve with you. I'm, I'm a part of, 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 of your brethren and the prophets and to keep the words of the book. Worship God. So this expression of worship is increasing. It's so important right now to let worship have preeminence. Not worship or about worship, but worship of God. We're in the year of the ambush because we're in the year of declaring the mercy. We're in agreement with the Lord. And the more we keep agreeing in praise and thanksgiving, we worship in spirit and in truth. So the word is the truth that we want to worship with. And the spirit of God is the one who enables us to worship in that level. But we also worship with our spirit and the truth of our heart. We keep our spirit alive, and we, we, it's just an powerful moment. So he then says, don't seal the words of this prophecy. It's the time is at hand. And then he says, whoever is unjust, stay unjust. Who's filthy, let him be filthy. Who's righteous, be righteous. Who is holy, be holy still. So it's, a, it's a, one of the postures, and I think I saw it online tonight in one of our chats, is it's be alert and stay in the place that God's guilt called you to be. Now, if you just, the, when he's speaking of the unjust and the filthy, they're oblivious. They're not even uh, moving in the direction. But if we who are in righteousness and in holiness, we want to stay there because there's more, there's more coming. It's like the glory is just already getting thicker and thicker in the sanctuary. Praise you, Jesus, for what you're doing. Praise you for what you're doing. Praise you. We give you honor that you are, your glory fills the whole earth. So he says, and behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. So in the quickness of the Lord's coming, there is his reward with him to give to everyone according to our work. So the pressure, the presence, the, the, the beauty of what is coming is with the quickness of the Lord. He's coming with his reward. I am the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. And blessed are those who do his commandments that they may have the right to eat of the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. So you f I, I feel that the chapter, the, the book ends with, a, with, with, the, with the throne room in the New Jerusalem. It began the book in Genesis in the Garden of Eden. And now there's this call still, be alert, stay alert, stay alert, stay alert. And he talks about outside dog sorcerers, sexual immoral, murderers, idolaters, and love and who practice a lie. There is still those who can't get in at this point or aren't getting to get in or are going to be just so close that they can't and we'll be able to be aware. I don't know that fully. But he said, I, Jesus, sent my angel to testify. And he talks about he is the root and offspring of David, the bright and morning star. There was so much for me today about the branch and God sending forth his own arm to save the intercession of Jesus. So the spirit and the bride, they say, come. Now he who hears say, come. 
And to him who thirsts, come. Whoever desires, let him take of the water of life freely. So this is an ongoing, salvation is never ending. There's going to be a, a continued invitation, and yet here we see the Spirit and the bride have matured. We, the bride has the voice of the Spirit. The bride has the sound of many waters. And the bride is this Jesus who's he has prepared from the beginning. And now we are in that place of maturity. So he tells a warning. Don't add to the words and don't take away from the words of this prophecy. Don't, don't try to make more of it or less of it. They're just, it's, it's there, it is written, and it's placed there. And then verse 20, he closes by saying, uh, He who testifies of these things says, Surely I am coming quickly. Amen. And that's Jesus who's testifying of these. He sent his angel to tell us, but he's testifying. I am coming quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. That's a powerful statement to, to declare over yourself and your family and over all of us as we go forward. It's the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ to be with us. It's not my grace. <coughs> it's his grace. It's the grace he's obtained in, in his earth. He was given in his, his first begotten as the only begotten. And he has now obtained it to, for all of us that have come into justification by faith. And it's something that we're to grow in and to increase. And it's to be with us. So I'm going to release that to us. I, Lord, declare. I declare in the name of our Lord that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with every one of us online, every one of our family. We just declare, we extend grace beyond where we are currently living or have influence on, but who are those who we care for and love and pray for. We say grace abound. The grace of our Lord Jesus be with us. Prepare our heart. We expect your quick return. We know your reward is with us, with you. We know that we are a people that are being sealed and not now name written on our forehead and to be forever before you. And we thank you for the river of life. And we just thank you for all that's yet to come, even after chapter 22. We bless you for that. And Father, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to just release a blessing. Yeah, go ahead. And um, we've got a quick, quick testimony. So you can keep or pause if you want to hear this, but um, this Friday night at, at 6 o'clock, is it 6 or 6.30? 6 o'clock is a rest and refresh. Wes and Nicole, money and lead it. It's a time of worship intimacy. It's in the sanctuary, and you can bring you. it's for young families especially, and you can bring your children because there'll be uh, care, child care for that. Go ahead. Yeah, we have a tremendous testimony here with Gabriel. So what happened was is um, over a month ago he lost his hearing and we just got quiet and I, we asked him if he could hear anything and if anything was on his heart and we got quiet and he heard the Lord speak to him and what did the Lord say to you? He said that he wanted to open up your ears, right? And we just prayed for him really quick. Me and Stephen prayed for him for like 30 seconds and he went 10 feet away and I spoke this way and he was over here and he heard me. Then he went 15 feet away and I spoke lower and I got like lower to where the chairs were like almost like muffling the sound and he heard us clearly. And he wants to testify and pray because the Lord did a miracle for Gabriel. I just want to thank Jesus for healing my ears and thank you for just healing my ears Lord, and thank you for letting me here from far away, Lord. And you want to pray, let's pray for the miracle for everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what, whatever's on your heart to pray for people right now. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Heal all these people's ears, whatever, Lord. Heal all, all their bodies, yes, Lord. Lord. Heal their backs, heal their arms, heal their legs, yes, heal their Lord. nose, heal their ears, heal their eyes, so they can hear. Yes, Thank Lord. you for... And just heal everybody, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay. All right. All right. So I'm going to release a blessing. You can continue into your prayer, but but uh, we're 
going to let go of the hope that we've carried for so long that seemed to be so old and God is introducing a brand new hope that is about to be picked up and the dates of the returning are uh, October 14th to 16th I believe that is really important uh, there'll be a lot of fruition for that uh, Eddie yeah okay we will do it. you want to receive the Lord and pray you would well we should do that right now so so Jesus made it very clear that if those who believe on me then that my righteousness is imparted through that believing and if they confess me as their Lord then their salvation is extended it's because what he submitted the father to to become our sin and then what the Father accomplished through his submission and raised him from the dead, we are made alive together and seated with him. So if that's what your heart is, I want to, I'll want say a prayer and you say it after me. That is my, that is my heart. Okay. That is my heart. So say this, dear Father. Dear Father. In Jesus. In Jesus. I thank you. I thank you. For the salvation of your son. For the salvation of your son. That is for me. That is for me. I believe. I believe that you raised him from the dead. That you raised him from the dead. And I confess you. And I confess you. As my Lord. As my Lord. Jesus. Jesus. You are my Lord. You are my Lord. Forgive my sin. Forgive my sin. And allow my life to live. And allow my life to live. To live in you. To live in your life. To live in your life. From now. From now. And forever. And forever. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And fill me with your Holy Spirit. And fill me with your Holy Spirit. So that I might have the strength to witness. So that I might have the strength to witness. And declare your goodness. Declare your goodness. Wherever you send me. Wherever you send me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You're in. (laughs) You're in the family. Oh. Thank you, 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 wow, thank you, Lord. so, so stand, stand right with me, let's all stand up, I want to, the, the hope, there's new hope, right, this is it, life's lived, and then to come to the next point, and all of a sudden God says it's all new, all new, so Lord, we would just release the blessing and receive the blessing, we've just had an ears open, healing, restore hearing restored and we just had a new birth because you opened this man's ears to hear the message of your salvation and now Larry is in our family so we say yes we're letting go of the old we say let the new come let the new hope that you're bringing just take over and our faith is in your ability to do what we no longer could even see could possible but you're saying you're doing it and we receive that impartation and transformation of the new hope in Jesus glorious name amen 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 Amen. blessing to everybody 